the Himalayas. It is a mountain region of majestic grandeur and high geographical significance. There is no other mountain range in the world which matches the Himalayas in its beauty, grandeur and richness. About 85% of India's population looks up to it in reverence to as the abode of their gods. It is virtually a lifeline for the subcontinent. It acts as a protector, regulator. These snow-clad peaks are the eternal sources of sweet water supply and energy. There has been large-scale deforestation, overgrazing and agriculture on forest and marginal lands, resulting in microclimatic changes, loss of wildlife, change in water levels in river regions, soil erosions, floods and landslides, all of which has brought about hardships, increasing environmental degradation in the ecologically fragile and geologically sensitive Himalayan region. The rapidly increasing population, the settlements and the development are exhibiting environmental transformation in the form of deteriorating environment and the depletion of natural resources. But the increase in population is not the sole responsible factor. While less enlightened government and non-government agencies and the unawareness of the people are equally liable for this degradation process. The Himalayas are at risk because of the various factors like ruthless deforestation, rapid growth of population, unplanned development due to the negligence of administration, unawareness of the society on environmental issues. It is said that Himalayas are only 60 to 70 million years old, a relatively early geological age at which these tectonical stresses that threw up these mighty ranges have not yet died down. Additional development pressures induced by human activities, recreational to extractive, are imposed on the fragile Himalayan mountain ecosystem. Rapid urban development demanding transfer of alpine forests to agriculture, human settlements, construction of roads, etc. Ever increasing tourism due to pilgrimage spots and holiday resorts. Extractive activities like mining, high dams for hydroelectric power, denudation of forests for fuel, etc. Ever growing of population is leading to more farming and more cultivated area and the cattle population is also increasing at the rate of 1.5% to 0.18% per year respectively. One cannot have conflict with the increase in the population. It is impossible to restrict pilgrimage or the adventure tourism. And to support it, infrastructure development is also very necessary. With all the growth, we also witness the exploitation, the greed, the ruthlessness of the nexus between the politicians, the administrators and the developers. Growth is inevitable, but the development has to be sustainable and not destructive. We need to find a fine balance between the ecology and the economics. Hi, this is Manoj Agrawal. During the recent times, however, due to the improvement in transport and communication facilities, a number of Himalayan urban centers are coming up and simultaneously the villages are vanishing. Now, due to improved accessibility of these places, people living in the large urban areas have a compulsive urge to take a break periodically and visit the nearby mountain or other resorts in order to rejuvenate in the unpolluted environment. It is a paradox that the urge to take a break from the crowded urban areas again give rise to the urban centers where people agglomerate in order to provide various kinds of services and facilities to the tourists. As cities grow, so does their consumption of energy and resources, as well as the production of waste and pollution. The sustainability problems associated with the rapid urbanization can be particularly troublesome in these mountain regions, where they are intensified by the fragility of the mountain environment. Mountain ecosystems are incredibly sensitive to even small disturbances and in the recent history, many such regions have suffered rapid degradation because of the human activities. Urbanization rates vary across the state. The northern part of the state is less urbanized than the south and the southern west districts where trade, commerce, transport and the diversification of economy is more gave rise to the town's growth and more urbanized areas. Regardless of the population size, many of these urban areas are major tourism destinations or are the gateways to these other tourist spots and the experience significant seasonal population increase. During the recent years, there has been a marked development of services like transportation and tourism. The rapid urbanization is also the result of ever increasing migration. There is no doubt that tourism promises a lot in these economically backward regions, but is there enough regulation and substantial planning taking place? 
Tourism brings marginal benefits to the local people and a substantial threat to the regional ecology. Interfering with the existing pilgrimage economy that used to absorb benefits directly into the region and providing job opportunities and other economical gains. The entire region is regarded as Devu Bhumi, the household of the gods, where modernization and the men's misdeeds have wrongly interfered with the religio cultural ethos, the traditional values, and the ecological sanctity, threatening the cultural tradition and bringing in large number of uh, crowds to the major destinations like Badrinath and Kedarnath. Lately, the search for the wilderness has become a fashion, has become a craze. The people wish to lose themselves amidst the Himalayan majesty and be alone with the shadow, exploring the unknown. The present growth of tourism activity is not well planned and many, especially the prohibited areas that is the forest or the land for further construction in urban areas, are being indiscriminately uh, utilized for raising money, leading to the fast urban decay. Around the first half of the 19th century, the British established the hill resorts in the more temperate lesser Himalayan zone to provide relief from the extreme climates of the plains. Darjeeling, Shillong, Nainital, Masuri, Shimla and Dalhousie served the needs of the British and later the Indian social elites and became the first modern Himalayan towns with important administrative functions. Mountaineering training centres have been set up in various regions, for example Uttarkashi in Gadwal. Trekkers and mountaineers are increasingly attracted to areas such as the higher Gadwal, Himalaya and there are amazing uh, bugyals decked with high altitude flowers or dwarf rhododerons. In 1935, Gadwal established India's first national park in the foothills and named it after the famous English conservationist Jim Corbett. Designed it as a tiger reserve, it has abundant animal life, but unfortunately, it has become a prey to badly thought out development activities. Garhwal Himalayas comprises Hinduism's major pilgrimage zone. Here are the sources of India's holiest rivers, the Ganga and the Yamuna. Here are also Hinduism's five Prayags, five Badris and five Kedars, all adjuncts to the famous Himalayan pilgrimage sites of Badrinath and Kedarnath. Himalayas are too precious to be lost. They are rich in natural wealth, but the rapid urbanization and the increased tourist activity have had a major impact on the environmental fabric. Lack of implementation of planning practices in the region has led to haphazard development overruling the natural constraints. Civic authorities face a problem in making the master plan for the development of these Himalayan hill towns due to the lack of surveys, information bases and the professional expertise. Most of these settlements are left organically to grow on their own and not planned. There are either no bylaws and controls or they are not appropriate for most of the times. The movement of pilgrims and their interaction with the local population and the surroundings have put up a very heavy strain on the infrastructure facilities in the area, en route to the famous destinations. The last two decades have registered an unprecedented and alarming growth in these pilgrimage tourism. This is unabated and continues to grow. Therefore, there is an urgent need to setting up guidelines for the future growth and the development before it gets too late. We cannot stay ignorant anymore. On this note, I end this conversation and hope to see you soon. Namaskar.